Inside Ottawa's 911 nerve center. At a moment, no one wants to ever happen. We're at uh, level zero right now. Level zero. That's right. Which literally means zero ambulances. This is that are available to transport someone to the hospital. This happens almost on a daily basis. It's been terrible. How did this happen? How does the nation's capital have no ambulances available? Oh, that was uh, medic four and five, six. We are attending. It's the beginning of a summer day in Ottawa, someone's worst day ever. When the worst happens, you expect the cavalry to come immediately, lights and sirens. The system usually works until it doesn't. When the hospitals are in dire straits, then it flows to us. We get plugged up there, we can't offload our patients, and then our levels suffer. And it's a big snowball effect. At headquarters, Superintendent Ben Ripley gets ready for a shift, keeping an eye out for his crews. I've seen crews for 10 hours at a hospital waiting to get offload their patient. A dedicated man increasingly worried about the healthcare system's own health. All the weight is falling onto the hospital system to manage the entire healthcare system, and it's just not capable of doing it. Because of that, we're seeing backlogs in the emergency room, and because of that, we're seeing our trucks sit there for hours on end. Which, is, which means you're not getting out to help somebody else. We're not getting out to help somebody else. Soup 4307. Copy, Bravo. Josh Picknell and Colin Waterhouse are in one of more than 30 ambulances on the road. We follow behind with Ben to see how this day unfolds. That's Josh and Colin. They were just dispatched. So they're just en route now. They're dispatched immediately to a call, possibly a fight. What do you see when you look at that screen? This is a critical piece of equipment for Ben. It tells me how many trucks I've got at hospital, what my longest offload delay is at a hospital, uh, how many available units that I have in the city of Ottawa right now. Increasingly, he sees those ambulances stuck at hospitals. I don't see the number of available crews for calls typically dropping as the day progresses. Yeah. Hey guys. Josh and Colin get there fast and there's a bit of relief. They can treat the patients on site. No need for a trip to the hospital. So it's back on the road and right into the most urgent of calls. This time, they need to go to the hospital right away. The ER at Ottawa's Queensway Carlton, and it's busy. And currently, we've got six ambulances here. Is six a lot for here? Uh, six is definitely on the higher end that we see here. This is one of the smaller hospitals in the city of Ottawa, so it's unusual to see six trucks here. As we sit here now, the hospital where we are at has a 200 minute maximum that means yeah. one ambulance has been here for 200 minutes correct so almost so that's three hours hmm. and 20, 20 minutes. minutes so in ontario we, you know the, the, the standard is supposed to be that the hospital has 30 minutes to offload us it's actually supposed to be from arrival to hospital now we get delays at triage quite often because they don't have enough staff there to triage us and then that once we're done triage, then waiting for a bed to be assigned, of course. Six ambulances parked outside, two paramedics per ambulance stuck inside, each team monitoring one patient. If ambulances are stuck here on offload delay, I, and while I'm here with this patient, I might be here for hours, I can't respond to a call. Right. All of these paramedics are taken out of commission while we're waiting to get out of the hospital. So you have a, a smaller amount of circulating ambulances in the city to respond mm -hmm. to emergencies. Do you have an instinct about what the problem is? I, I think it's multifactorial. I think that we have a, an insurmountable call volume. Mm -hmm. I think the hospitals are, are backlogged. I don't think there's any, I don't actually think there's any place for them to go right now in the ER mm -hmm. while we're waiting. Everyone's operating at max capacity. Josh and Colin waiting inside for what was about an hour and a half. And as bad as that feels, at least this ER is still open. 
As you were sitting in there, we got an alert that another hospital is is closing here. I heard, yeah, word travels fast around. Yeah. So what does that what does that do to you? So for me, when as soon as I hear that, I mean, number one, we got to think of the citizens of Ottawa. So now they're one ER down. Uh, my next thought is to myself. I'm working this weekend, and when we have a ER shut down like that, it probably means that uh, not only will my workload probably be higher, things might be a little bit more desperate for people out there who uh, don't have as many places to turn. Do you think you're doing okay in Ottawa? Define okay. Um, our staff are not okay. Um, I'm not okay. You know, we all, we're all coming into work trying to do the best job that we can with the system that we're currently working in. It, it's just, you know, at some point in time, something's got to give. So are you seeing more abuse? I'm, I'm definitely anecdotally seeing more cases of persons becoming aggressive and violent towards paramedics. Strain on the road and real stress to back at that ambulance communication centre. TV cameras have never been in here before. We're with paramedic chief Pierre Poirier the moment the crunch hits. Uh, our call volume increased, we got a lot busier, and at this point right now we don't have any ambulances available for that next call. So what level are you at now? We're at uh, level zero right now. Level zero? That's right. Which literally means zero ambulances. That are available to transport someone to the hospital. In a city of a million people? And 2,800 square kilometers. And it will change by the second uh, and by the minute. Look at that screen, the red, that is level zero. I just have to let you know that due to present call volume, there may be a delay in us sending the ambulance, so it's really important that you do give us a call back if anything changes, okay? They ask us what time, how long it's gonna take. I can't give them ETA, I can't give them an exact time. It makes me feel bad, you know, that we can't send someone right away. Who's on regional today? You're gonna be all right? Yeah. Yeah, the system is in crisis and we all need help. If someone says to you, yeah, I, I hear you, it's, it's a crisis, what, what are they supposed to do? Uh, I think we need people to advocate on behalf of uh, the paramedics. Make service. some noise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're not telling them not to call 911. We say, please call 911, but use the system appropriately. You worried about them? About your staff here? Every day. They're all quick to say help will come for the sick and wounded. When Ottawa hits level zero, no one can be transported to hospital. Ottawa has single responders to send. And then paramedics are also called in from other jurisdictions. When you're in a time of crisis, it isn't necessarily all despair. And Ottawa has implemented other creative solutions to help alleviate the pressure. I think it's a time for innovation. Can we still provide safe care? Right. Uh, and maybe not take that individual to the hospital. Can we provide care in the home or in the retirement home, a long-term care home, uh, and still do that safely? So you see uh, paramedics have expanded scopes of practice, which allows them to do more and more clinically in, uh, in different environments, and that's been very positive. But none of this solves the crisis happening right now or the nagging feeling that it's not going away. In like 2011, on New Year's, which would traditionally be our most busy day, I remember being the last ambulance available in the city and thinking to myself, this is insane. How could a city as big as Ottawa have one ambulance available to respond to the entire county? Yeah. And now we have no ambulances multiple times a day. Incrementally, it has gotten worse and worse and worse and we have just learned to cope, but we're not really coping anymore. I mean it when I say I think this is the greatest job in the world. I've been doing it for 11 years and I love it. We're good to go. But if you were to tell me today that the way things are right now is the way it will be for the rest of my career, I would resign tomorrow, absolutely. Honored to hold the jobs they do to save lives, but this isn't sustainable and they need good ideas fast.